Welcome to the Health Angle Podcast with Dr. Mike Headley and Dr. Gordon Femright, where we'll be exploring different angles of health to achieve the best version of yourself. Now here's your hosts, Dr. Mike and Dr. Gordon. Welcome everybody. I am Dr. Mike and with me is Dr. Gordon Femright. Welcome, Gordy. Hi, Mike, and welcome, viewers. If you haven't already done this, uh, please subscribe, please like. You can also get notifications of our upcoming podcasts by clicking the notification bell. So, Dr. Mike, today we have a subject on vitamin C. So, vitamin C, I think we're going to share some really good information. Hopefully, we'll share some things that people are really surprised about. So, vitamin C, what comes to mind to you? You know, what I have seen over the last probably five to 10 years, whether you go into a grocery store, I don't go into drug stores a lot, but you go into different stores, you see packets, there's different brands called emergency. And then in more health food stores, there's NRC. So there's these packets of vitamin C, a thousand milligrams. Sometimes they add other electrolytes and things like that. And so that's emerged over the last five or maybe even 10 years. And people have always known about vitamin C for a lot of things. And then during COVID, that was one of the things that they recommended. The people that I study that said the zinc and the vitamin D3, um, quercetin, vitamin C. And so it's it's always been really, really important. And I'm really excited to share some of this, Gordy. Um, but sometimes it gets overshadowed. This astaxanthin, resveratrol, some glutathione, and some of these other fancier things kind of overshadow it a little bit. But let's don't forget about the all-important vitamin C because our body can't make it. So we must take it. What what comes to mind for you, Gordy? Well, the same thing. A lot of people will look at the labels, they go, oh, it's water soluble or fat soluble. They might not even know what that means, but water soluble means that it's basically, it dissolves in water. And so if we have too much vitamin C, we're going to urinate the rest of it out. But you're right, that we don't make it. We need to get vitamin C. A lot of times we don't get enough vitamin C and there's other processes in our body that, that need vitamin C. And I can't wait to share some of this because because people are going to be like, wow, I had no idea there was a connection there. So they will be kind of fun to, to dive into that. I also want to just really quick mention, like, oh, fat soluble, by the way, those are vitamins like A, D, E, and K. Those are stored in the fat. So if your body needs those vitamins, it, at least there's storage there. It can get some of those vitamins through that, the, those means. But I just want to share really quick before I give it back to you, Mike, foods that have vitamin C. I know when you think of vitamin C, you think of supplementation, supplementation, but there's a lot of good foods out there that have good concentrations of vitamin C, particularly citrus fruits like oranges, grapefruit, lemons, and limes, also berries, green vegetables, tomatoes, potatoes, peppers, especially green peppers and red peppers. Those are really good quantity of vitamin C. Cabbage, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, and spinach. So those are big things. You know, a lot of people have heard of scurvy and they go, what is scurvy? Scurvy was a big deal, but this was this was way back in the 16th and even the 18th century when they just didn't have the diets we have today. And they developed a deficiency called scurvy. In fact, it killed more than 2 million sailors. And at one point, 50% of all scurvy deaths were due to voyages, such as a sailor would take. So we don't have that problem anymore, but we do need vitamin C for some basic functions in our body. So back to you, Mike. Didn't they call didn't they call them limeys or whatever, the the sailors and stuff, because they would either eat lemons or limes just to not get scurvy? Um, talking about what you said, one cup of some of these things. I'm going to tell you what your recommended daily allowance is. The current daily value I have, Gordy, is 90 milligrams for men and 75 milligrams for women is the current daily value. And so listen to this. One cup of Acerola cherries gives you 2,740% of your recommended daily allowance. And then guavas, one cup of guava is 628% of the RDA. Sweet yellow peppers, 317% of the RDA. Parsley, like people think parsley, I put that on my salad or whatever, is 133% 
of the RDA. Broccoli, right? I didn't I I just don't associate broccoli with vitamin C. But one cup of broccoli has 135% of the RDA. Oh. And then lemons and like you said, papayas, strawberries, oranges, of course, and kiwis is another one. So here's some interesting signs and symptoms of vitamin C deficiency. And and the reason some of the most common reasons people are deficient is poor diet. Obviously, if you aren't ingesting that, alcoholism really depletes your vitamin C, anorexia, smoking, and then dialysis. So what are some other signs and symptoms? Rough, bumpy skin, corkscrew-shaped body hair, bright red hair follicles, smooth-shaped nails with red spots or lines, dry, damaged skin, easy bruising, slow healing wounds, uh, painful swollen joints, weak bones, bleeding gums, like if you're flossing and uh, having dental work and stuff and the bleeding doesn't stop, or immunity, colds and flus and recurrence of strep and things like that, chronic inflammation, oxidative stress, unexplained weight gain is one of, not the only reason, but, and then also fatigue and poor mood are, are some of the signs and symptoms of vitamin C deficiency. Great stuff. I want to read something that I just read recently. I had ideals about this, but after doing some research, I was pretty shocked at reading this. So right now, currently in the United States, 40% of us Americans currently have a metabolic syndrome. Now, this is a term for a factors that raise the risk for developing serious health conditions such as heart disease, stroke, or diabetes, which is on the rise. I think everybody listening to this knows somebody that who has had heart disease, a stroke, or diabetes. It's so common. So 40% of the population, basically. So those that have this metabolic condition will have three or more of the following risk factors. High blood pressure, low levels of HDL cholesterol, which is the good cholesterol, extra fat around their waist, high triglycerides, and high blood sugar levels. And this is largely due to the diets here in, in the Western world, the American diet, the, the traditional American diet, which is rich in fats and processed sugars and processed foods of all types. So the poor eating habits that cause this metabolic syndrome also create imbalances in the gut microbiome. And this impairs the gut function and creates additional toxins in the blood that causes the depletion of vitamin C. And this has a knock-on effect on vitamin E. In other words, it makes vitamin E not as effective. So if you deplete these two essential antioxidants, it makes situation for people with those metabolic syndromes even worse. So it leaves them without two of those really important vitamins that helps the body to uh, with oxidative stresses that damages the cell. It's a very dangerous cycle. So if you have metabolic syndrome, that is a precursor again to heart disease, diabetes, and stroke. This study indicates that you need to increase your consumption of vitamin C. And that will go a long way to improve your health. However, the traditional recommendation that you see for vitamin C likely is not going to be enough. The other thing that I saw, Dr. Mike, is cognitive performance. A study that appeared in the Journal of Frontiers in Aging and Neuroscience showed that vitamin C is crucial to cognitive performance. It plays a role in nerve cells, which are critical for brain and the nervous system. So I know common colds, you just talked about that. That's something that a lot of people know, improved immunity, but also it plays a factor in blood vessels necessary for bone structure, cartilage in the bones, iron absorption, skin integrity, the list goes on. So back to you, Dr. Mike. I have a list of best uses of vitamin C, boosting immunity, antioxidant properties, heart health, gout prevention, wound healing. It's really essential for collagen synthesis. I mentioned in some of our podcasts that's one of my favorite things is collagen. 
in the collagen that I take from Ancient Nutrition has vitamin C in there because then it helps absorb the collagen and helps wound healing and helps with cartilage and joints. Iron absorption, pregnancy and breastfeeding. Vitamin C is essential for fetal development and maternal health during pregnancy and breastfeeding. And so there's a lot of reasons to take vitamin C. And so a couple other things that I would just like to mention that are that, that I think are pretty important. My parents and your parents are getting up in age and they've been into hospitals and or had surgeries and or have had things. And then our clients too, if they've had a knee replacement or hip replacement or they they've were in the hospital for COVID or whatever, I hear this word sepsis, Gordy. Do you do you hear that with people kind of concerned if they go into hospitals about sepsis at all? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I had a, a fellow colleague, one of our colleagues said that somebody just came and they, they died of sepsis, uh, just took over their body and they were only about 35, seemed to be in good shape. This was well before the pandemic, so it wasn't COVID, but yeah. So um, sepsis is caused by an aggressive out of control immune response to an infection in the bloodstream. So each year an estimated 1 million Americans get sepsis and up to half of them die. So it is it is significant. Giving patients IV vitamin C with hydrocortisone and thiamine, which is B1, for two days reduces mortality nearly five-fold from 40% to 8.5%. And so lab testing shows that while neither vitamin C or hydrocortisone alone can prevent cell death following exposure to toxins produced by the bacteria, but when given in combination, the concoction does protect the cells. And so I thought that was that was pretty interesting since a lot of people you go in for routine things and they're all concerned about sepsis because half the people die, they get it. That I'm curious how many doctors would recommend that, you know, vitamin C, B1, and then hydrocortisone. So I, I thought that was that was pretty darn interesting. And then just the antiviral strategies that people take. Linus Pauling, wasn't he into 10,000 milligrams of vitamin C? And, and a lot of people, when they aren't feeling well, they take not just random amounts, 500 or 1,000 milligrams, whatever's on their their supplement, um, oranges and limes and things like that, but they do it to bowel tolerance. So they, if you take too much vitamin C, you'll, you'll have loose stools. And so people want to take it just below that threshold because then your all of your tissues are saturated with vitamin C and it's a really, really good antiviral strategy. So I have one other tidbit to share, but go ahead, Gordy, you, it's over to you. Yeah, I was going to talk just a little bit about the vitamin C and its effect on as an antioxidant. I, I think we breezed over that when you talk about oxidative stress and free radicals in your body. What are those? And what are you talking about? You know, antioxidant. Well, the body, when it breaks down foods, it can form free radicals. If you're exposed to too much sun, free radicals. You're exposed to secondhand smoke or primary smoke. If you're a smoker, free radicals. Any kind of exposure to like x-rays, if you go to the doctor, you have x-rays or other medical diagnostic equipment that puts out these free radicals. So your body's full of these free radicals. So you need to neutralize those so it doesn't make other cells in your body unstable and really cause havoc on your body. So just want to clear that up. So that's what we mean by vitamin C having antioxidant behavior. I also want to talk just a little bit about like cancer. Eating a, a diet rich in vitamin C foods such as fruits and vegetables might lower the risk of many types of cancer such as breast, colon, and lung cancer. And then also when it comes to healthy digestive system, getting insufficient amount of vitamin C from your diet reduces your stomach production of hydrochloric acid. That hydrochloric acid is which helps to break down the food so we can get the nutrients from it. So you really need this for digestion and to break down the foods. This leaves digestive issues such as burping or farting or heartburn. So you can improve your digestion by simply getting enough vitamin C. So that's pretty significant. 
So, Dr. Mike? Yeah, it goes along with your antioxidant explanation, which is great. Tell me what your recollection of this is. So vitamin C molecules are similar to the sugar molecule. They structurally resemble sugar, the vitamin C molecules. So according to one source, ascorbic acid is a weak sugar acid structurally related to glucose. This suggests that vitamin C molecules share a similar chemical structure with sugar molecules, such as glucose. What I've read in several health books and in research books is since vitamin C and sugar molecules are similar and vitamin C attaches to the outside of our cell membranes. So when vitamins come along, we have that, you know, that antioxidant protection from the viruses, but also when we have cancer cells, they can attack some of the antioxidant vitamin C because they think it's sugar because a lot of cancers thrive off sugar. And if you aren't having a lot of sugar in your body, in your blood ins- blood glucose and insulin is working properly, and you have really sufficient amounts of vitamin C and a- antioxidant protection, well then it won't kill cancer cells, but the cancer cells will attach and eat some of the vitamin C and it will neutralize the cancer. So then our immune cells can go after it and take care of the cancer cells. And so I thought that was really, really amazing on a molecular level. Like you said, vitamin C can really, really prevent a lot of types of cancer. That's great, Dr. Mike. I have two final points and I'll throw it back to you. I just want to make clear for those that are taking above and beyond the vitamin C levels that you may or may not be taking, Mayo Clinic does say that there can be some possible interactions, especially people taking medication containing aluminum, such as phosphate binders, chemotherapy, those under chemotherapy or estrogen or protease inhibitors, statins, such as cholesterol lowering drugs, niacin, warfarin, which is an anticoagulant. So if you think that you're on any of these medication, it's a, probably a good idea to consult with your doctor if you're going above and beyond your vitamin C intake. And then as far as like, what kind of vitamin C should I get? What product do you recommend? In general, alternative holistic healthcare providers, chiropractors, licensed nutritionists, probably your best source because they sell the vitamins that have the strictest guidelines for manufacturer testing for safety and efficiency. So how do you know if the company or the product that you're going to be buying is a good quality product? You can actually go onto their website and they should have a manufacturing quality assurance page. And that'll describe the manufacturing, the testing, and more about the product. So just go to the website and look for a manufacturing quality assurance page, and that will ensure that you're buying a good quality supplement. So that's all I have for this uh, topic, Mike. What else do you have? Yeah, I you know I like whole food based, organic, not just cheap synthetic ascorbic acid. On the back of whole food organic vitamin C supplements, you'll see acerola cherries or rose hips, and it comes from a whole food. Standard process comes to mind. They have whole uh, food-based supplements and things like that. So yeah, you want to absorb it. You want to utilize it and add that to your routine, but you want to make sure you get a quality supplement too. Yeah. Um, I want to just jump in real quick, Mike. And I think what makes a lot of these supplements inexpensive is they use these waxers and binders. That's what holds the, the vitamin together. And if you go cheap on those waxers and binders, first of all, they don't break down as easily. And if they don't break down, your body doesn't get it anyway. So you want to make sure that you go to the good quality with the with the quality assurance that you got good excipients uh, that are going to break down when they're supposed to. So Yeah, and it, it wouldn't be a podcast if we didn't talk about your famous quote is um, consistency is more important than intensity. But mm-hmm. I think quality is more important than quantity when it comes to to supplements and food and things like that say, wow, I'm taking 5,000 milligrams of vitamin C, but if you're only absorbing 50 milligrams or something, quality matters. Tell me what you think of this, Gordy. This This really blew me away. And this is really, really, really important. 
glutathione is one of the body's most powerful antioxidants. It's produced in the liver. Of course, as we get older, we don't produce as much, but it, it can protect our body from heavy metal damage, among other things. So unrelated to heavy metals, but worth noting, glutathione protection protects fats from oxidization. And you mentioned what antioxidants were. It supports our mitochondria, which is our cellular energy. It boosts our immunity and helps our brain function at its peak. Glutathione also recharges other antioxidants, making them more effective at fighting inflammation and is a cofactor for dozens of enzymes that neutralize damaging free radicals. Really, really important. And you can get supplements of liposomal glutathione, etc. So the lower your levels of glutathione are, the higher your risk of all of the four top killers, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, dementia, Alzheimer's. So it's always a good idea to supplement with vitamin C, the world's best known antioxidant, since low vitamin C levels are associated with low levels of glutathione. You know, isn't that significant? When glutathione is such a powerful antioxidant from the body, and it can detox heavy metals and helps with brain function and recharges other antioxidants that boost our immunity. But low levels of vitamin C are associated with low levels of glutathione. That's that's why absolutely wow. vitamin C is on my top 10 list. Yeah. And glutathione, that's a subject, that's a vitamin that we can talk about in the future, Dr. Mike. I think that's a big one. And um, I think a lot of people just became familiar with glutathione just during the pandemic because of the effects of what it can do with other interaction with uh, supplements. So that would be a good one to dive into. I yes. want to do a summary real quick, and then I'll throw it back to you. Summary of kind of things that we've talked about so far. Vitamin C intake can benefit your health in many ways that like we just talked about. It's a powerhouse in antioxidant. It helps keeps your immune system in check. So if you're fighting colds and flus and bugs and even cancer, it keeps that immune system going. C can also help your body fight infections, heal from wounds, improve cognitive performance, maintain the hydrochloric acid in the stomach, neutralize some of the toxins that our body gets through the oxidative stress. And vitamin C also plays a positive role in those with metabolic syndrome, which is a precursor to the heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. So just a quick summary. So I think I think vitamin C really important, but uh, good, good information, yeah. Dr. Mike. Yeah, yeah. If you don't take it, considering talking to the provider that you discuss with about supplementation and considering adding it to your stack, as they say. Well, as always, I like to finish our podcast, Gordy, with asking people, what's your number one takeaway that you can share with a colleague or a coworker tomorrow at lunch? And then what's the number one action step that you can take today? Are you going to look up to see if your vitamin C supplement is highly absorbable? Does it have the excipients and binders like Dr. Gordy talked about? Or are you going to add it? Is it in your collagen for absorption? What's your number one action step that you can take today? And so with that, Gordy, uh, why don't you let everybody know what we're going to talk about next time? Well, our next subject is going to be a very important subject, in my opinion, and it's on fluoride. Fluoride found in toothpaste, fluoride found in our drinking water. Is it good for you? Is it not good for you? We're going to get right into that. We're going to dive into it. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Like our content and hit that notification bell. So until next week, we'll see you on the Health Angle Podcast. Thank you for joining us on the Health Angle Podcast. Please subscribe to our channel and catch us for our next episode.